Now let's look at what type of things in the world would shift a demand and supply curve. So let's look at the demand curve for pizzas. It might seem like, let's say the price of pizza goes down, then hey, if pizza is cheaper, I want more pizzas. It might seem like that's gonna shift the demand curve to the right, meaning an increase in demand for pizzas. But that's actually not what happens if the price of pizza uh, changes. Here's the thing. The price of pizza is actually one of the axes on the demand curve for pizza. Here's how the demand curve really is made in the real world. If you were Pizza Hut and if you wanted to find your demand for pizza, you're probably just gonna have to call people up in a survey and ask them, hey, how many slices of pizza would you want if this was a price? How many would you want if this was a price? How many would you want if this was the price? So really this demand curve is the different quantities that people would buy based on different prices of your good. So if all that's happening is the price of your pizza is lowered, that's just a different point on this same demand curve that you've already made. So a change in the price of your good, yeah, you will buy more pizzas if it's a lower price, but that's on the same curve. That's called a change in quantity demanded, not a change in demand. A change in demand is the whole curve shifting. A change in quantity demanded is a movement along this curve, which happens if the price of that good changes. So what type of things then would cause a change in demand? What would cause the entire curve to shift? Well, uh, one thing is prices of related goods. So not the price of pizza itself, but let's say Coca-Cola, which we can assume people usually have as a complement to pizza. They usually have Coke with pizzas. Well, in that case, if, pizza, if uh, Coke becomes cheaper, then people will actually demand more pizza. So in that case, the entire curve for pizza the demand curve shifts to the right. The demand goes to the right if Coke becomes cheaper. So another good does have the ability, uh, another good's price changing does have the ability to change the demand for your good. Uh, now, on the other hand, if we were looking at a substitute good, meaning something that's kind of in competition with pizza, like burgers. Well, let's say burgers became cheaper. Well, in that case, you probably want to have more burgers and less pizza. So in that case, the demand would actually shift to the left. So if another good's price changes, you have to ask yourself, is that a substitute good, a complementary good, or not related at all? And based on that, you can decide whether you want to shift your demand left, right, or not move it at all. Now, other things that could change the demand curve are income. If your income goes up, uh, here's where it gets a little funny. It kind of depends on whether your good is what we call normal or inferior. A normal good is something that you want more of when you have more income. And an inferior good is something that you actually want less of when you have more income like ramen noodles, for example. If you become really rich, you're probably gonna buy less ramen noodles. So if a good's an inferior good, and if your income goes up, then your demand for that good shifts to the left. But if pizza is a normal good, well, in that case, if your income goes up, the demand will shift to the right, and if your income goes down, the demand will shift to the left. So when there's an income change, first ask yourself, is this good normal or inferior? And based on that, you can shift the demand. Uh, other things that could change the demand curve are really just uh, changes in preferences, which could happen. Uh, a celebrity endorsement, if a celebrity endorses a good, then that'll make people want it more. If there's more consumers in a town, then the market demand is more, so that shifts to the right. So rather than trying to memorize a list, which you can kind of, but it's really better to have a conceptual understanding. What will make me want more of this good, even if its price didn't change, right? Because a price change is just moving along it. So if something makes you want more of it, even at the same price, that's what's gonna cause the shift. Now let's look at things that will change your supply curve. Well, similarly, a change in the price of this good alone won't change the supply curve. That'll just be a change in quantity supplied. You're just moving from one point to another. But let's say tomato sauce becomes expensive and it's used to make pizza. Well, here's what happens. Your cost of producing pizza now goes up. If you own a pizza store and you're making pizza, your costs are now higher. So all these Y values uh, your costs are higher, so your new curve is kind of above the old one. Here's, a, here's one thing to keep in mind though for shifting the supply curve. Whenever costs go up, your curve is moving upwards, but that's really a decrease in supply because you're moving left. For every price, you're supplying less quantity uh, of that good. And so really, rather than thinking up or down at all, for, for this whole process of shifting supply or demand, you could just try to think of it as a left and rightward shift. So anytime there's a decrease in supply or demand, your curve will shift to the left. And anytime there's an increase, it shifts to the right. 
So here again, your cost went up, so it's physically moving upwards, but it's really just a shift left, as you can see. So uh, here, what are all the things that could cause a supply curve to shift? Well, it's mostly based on the cost of production. So notice it has nothing to do with the demand for the good, right? If Barack Obama endorses a product, sure, a lot more people might demand that product, but that doesn't affect the supply curve one bit because the cost of producing it won't change. Now, on the other hand, let's say, you know, your input good like tomato sauce became expensive or even workers' wages go up. Well, in that case, it's still, it's now gonna cost you more to produce a good because you have to pay your workers more. So that will also cause a leftward shift in the supply curve. Technology, if your technology go, increases, for example, and makes you more efficient and better at producing things, then your supply will shift to the right. So really, for supply curve shifts, again, rather than trying to memorize a list, just try to think, will this make it easier or cheaper to produce the good? And if so, your supply moves to the right. Now let's look at an example where supply and demand both shift simultaneously, and we have to figure out what happens to the equilibrium price and quantity. Now here's the thing, whenever one of the curves shifts, uh, it's unambiguous, meaning it's clear what happens to the price and quantity. If demand increases, for example, the equilibrium P and Q, the X and Y value, both go up. If supply increases, for example, then uh, the equilibrium price will go down, but the quantity will go up. You can always just draw a graph one at a time. But if both graphs shift at the same time, then one of them might be ambiguous, where uh, you know it could go up or down, depending on which curve shifts more. The best way to do these problems is to not really worry about graphing them together because then it'll be hard to keep track of which one's ambiguous. So here, the best way to do it is one by one and just kind of to track the end result. So let's do that over here. So let's say in the market for suits, ties, which are a complement, you wear them with your suit, uh, ties become cheaper. Well, in that case, the demand for suits will increase. So that's your demand shifting up. So your D goes from D1 to D2. So your demand increase causes your price to go up as we see from here to here the equilibrium y value goes up price increases and the quantity also increases your x value increases but let's say it becomes uh, your uh, weight your employers have a, employees have a higher wage and so your supply shifts to the left so your s goes from s1 to s2 so no matter whether you look at this one or this one, either way, what's happening is your quantity is going to the left and your price is going up. So whenever the supply decreases, that alone will cause the price, as we can see, to increase and the quantity to decrease. So if we look at these shifts together, both of them on their own are causing the price to go up so we can be sure that the price definitely increases but the quantity, one shift makes it go up, the other shift makes it go down, so the quantity is ambiguous. It could go up, down, or stay the same.